The problem with the Marxist labour theory of value is that it views value as something object of rather than subject of. For example, I view films, videos, games, clothes, or anything in particular, books, doesn't matter what it is, I have my own subject of value over what I think is valuable, but just because I hold something valuable doesn't mean it's valuable to another person. I may hold a particular genre of films as something fantastic. I'm not really the biggest fan of horror films because I think they're just boring and tedious and they're the same thing over and over and a lot of it's just gore and it's just nothing really that interesting to me. However, with that of comedy and action films, it's something that I generally love. I have a subject of value to. There are three types of value in Marxist theory. Use value, exchange value, and market value. These are all distinctly different, but all related. The last two are most important, as they are actual quantitative values, while use value is slightly more abstract. For Marx, something has use value if it's useful to society in some way, and that's it. He isn't concerned with what society considers to be useful, or why they do, just that they do. The other part of the problem with the Marxist labour theory of value is prices. They think that prices are something knowable, value is something knowable, that we can somehow know what a price is and know what a value is and just stick a fixed price to something. As we can see from the marketplace, prices are not something fixed, prices are something that fluctuate with that of time. Ludwig von Mises understood this very well. He asked the question of who is the product valuable to and at what time is it valuable as well of course in relation to other products that may be available on the market. If you use the example of clothes, summer clothing may be valuable to people during the summer period, however as you move into the winter period, value changes because people are not going to hold the same value for summer clothing during a winter period of time. Therefore, price fluctuates to match that demand in the marketplace. Another thing you could look at is how complex things are that even in the United States of America, no two states are the same. For example, Florida is different from New York because Florida is a state that is hot all year round. Compare that to New York. New York is a state that is cold during the winter period and of course it snows, and therefore demand is not going to be the same. And then you've got the complex argument that some families buy more than what other families do. So each and every single individual in society are all different. There lies the problem with the Marxist labour theory of value. It doesn't take into account the complexity of that of society because no two individuals are the same. So you go through a population of 70 million people or 300 million people and you're faced with a massive problem because each and every single individual of society all have different needs and wants. So the problem with the Marxist labour theory of value is that they view it based upon the time spent on a particular job as well of course how many people work on a said job. Now if that's what value is based upon then surely digging a big hole in the ground and then filling up the next day would serve any purpose and value to society. The fact of the matter is it doesn't because it had no end value to that of the consumer. All you did was waste the time digging a big hole in the ground and then filling it up the next day. It served no purpose. It didn't improve the material standards of living of anyone. Just because you spend longer on producing something doesn't make it more valuable. Even at that argument, how many people work on it just because there's more people employed on a specific job doesn't mean to say that it holds more value for its end product. You could pretty much see this from the overmanned coal industry. The coal industry was in decline. Just because more people worked in the coal industry and the coal industry was overmanned did not mean to say that the end value of the product had any value. 
because the market was changing. For example, domestic heating was moving away from coal and it was moving towards North Sea oil and gas. So an example of this was given by Milton Friedman who was arguing and taking the piss and joking about this of China where the workers were using shovels to dig a hole rather than that of using machines and he joked by saying well why are you getting them to use shovels why don't you just get them to use teaspoons or whatever the marxist labor theory of value is completely and wholly irrational it doesn't take into account this of what's the end value and who's it valuable to and this is why marxism itself is so wasteful but it isn't just a failure because of the fact that it doesn't take into account that value is subjective. It's not just a failure simply because that it's based upon this deeply flawed idea of basing it on time and how many people you get to do a particular job. But the main problem is down to the economic calculation problem which you can check out and I've linked above and I've explained about this many times before. Once they begin the government price fixing, as I mentioned, because they view prices as something knowable and something fixed, once they start fixing prices above or below market value, they distort the information of profits and losses, resulting in shortage problems and surplus waste problems, and that's why the likes of the Soviet Union or Venezuela and so many of these countries ended up with the problems that they did. Even within mixed economies, for example Great Britain with that of the British NHS and the massive big long waiting lines. So anyway folks, I hope you've enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video, favourite the video, share the video or whatnot. If you've got any questions that you would like to ask me, comment in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you for watching. Cheers.